recording again. Whoopsie! Alright, so we mulliganed the first hand that was bad. This hand is Leyline in it, so we're gonna keep, and hopefully this is a matchup where Leyline is good. Um, I'm gonna bottom that. I think I wanna hit some land drops. I would love to put this into play. God bless. Just for reference, uh, my wife had uh, soda left over at an event for work, so she just brought a bunch of it. We actually usually don't keep soda in the house. But while it's here, I'm gonna drink it since I'm a little bit tired. I really hope they're playing burn and they're like cursing at the sky right now. That's my that's my hope. My hope is that this pause is them swearing in chat because I just put a ley line into play game one. That would be that would be my dream. And my opponent has slid sideways off the face of the earth. Oh no, Sea Chrome Coast. Oh no, Lotus Bloom. If they don't have an Echoing Truth in their main deck, we could be okay. Another 10 out of 10 playing Ad Nauseam. That's actually pretty good in this matchup. Yep, yep, yep. Lab, Lab Maniac is definitely good against us. <laughs> that being said, this rule of law... This rule of law might do God's work. Maybe. This doesn't stop them from casting the spell. This just says, um, I can't be targeted by that card. I don't know what happens after this, but you you go nuts, opponent. You you draw your deck. Um, they're just gonna play. There should be a laboratory maniac in their main deck, I assume. We just like can't beat laboratory maniac. Laboratory Maniac could be like the bottom card of their deck, right? Oh no, we were so close! We were so close! How great would Oblivion Ring be? We'd still, we need like running. No, they have a bunch of pact negations. They're gonna keep their pact of negations and they'll they'll be fine. I'm not gonna click through this. Eidolon, Nevermore, Great Aurora Mancy, Grand Abolisher, Defense Grid. Oh no, we got Yu-Gi-Oh cards in our deck. That's tilting. 
Ghostly Prison doesn't have a text box. Leyland of Sanctity is fine. Uh, Suppression Field activated abilities unless they're mana abilities. This card actually doesn't do anything either. Oh yeah, definitely 10 out of 10 donation deck. Solemnity also doesn't do anything in this matchup though. Oh yeah, Stony Silence is fine. Suppression field works on Lightning Storm. In Brexit on life is much worse. <laughs> All right, let's go. Uh, yeah, I have the Nevermore effects to stop Lab Ben. Pretty sure we just keep this, right? It's got the ley line, it's got Oromancy and Rule of Law. Uh, Lotus Bloom's a mana ability. Okay, there's a Delic Tutor. I just don't have 10 of however many of the one basic is. Got Lotus Bloom on suspend. I go ahead, play this rule of law out. Why are there flag zones in this deck? It's like thin. So tutor, we just get never more, right? <laughs> what do we name with this? Do we just name Adnauseum or do we name Laboratory Maniac? We probably name Ad Nauseam, right? Ha! And because of this, because of uh, Rule of Law, they actually can't cast any more spells this turn. <sighs> oh, it gets Mist Veil. No, they could, they could Ad Nauseam at our end step. They almost certainly have spoils also, but it's harder for them to go off with that. What's this card do? Put target card for... <laughs> yeah, deal. I now understand why people do things like this. Uh, wizards can make standard less stale by um, having rotation happen more often, and also by making sure that when they they don't uh, print a bunch of busted stuff, this is going to get Pact of Negation, or they're going to beat us down with this. <laughs> Some people play Patriarch Scorn in this deck. That's cute. Patriarch Scorn is the the time shifted uh, reverend silence, right? All right, I'm hoping this game is over at this point. We're on the scoreboard. We've won a game, hopefully. <laughs> 
the old check if Nevermore works on Magic Online, and when we find out it works, we can see. <laughs> God bless, God bless you, opponent. Play to every out. Magic Online being a dumpster fire is definitely an out. <laughs> God bless. It can't have it both ways. Either you get to complain that magic is stale. You, you either get to complain that magic is stale, that standard is stale and it needs to change more, or you get to complain that you can't have rotations faster. Like, you don't get both. Oh, this hand's just, like, not good enough, right? It's, like it's got double dickthos in it to be awkward and doesn't have any of our meaningful enchantment hate. Has Nevermore, Leyline, and Rule of Law in it. Defense Grid. Nah, I actually don't need that. We just need a white source, right? <laughs> it's a good draw. Putting this into play actually makes us, uh, lets us filter into Nevermore, which is cute. So like the thing that grinds my gears the most about people being upset about the fast the faster rotation cycle is that half the sets we have now are only legal for 15 or 18 months. So like people were talking about that rotation cycle being too quick. It's like, well, that's how fast the rotation cycle is for half our sets now anyway. So like if you're saying excuse me, sorry. The black syrup makes me burp. Um if you're saying the rotation cycle is too fast like, for that, like, it's too fast in general for most things. I think I want a rule of law first. I'm gonna rule of law first. Yeah, I do, I do, I do know legendary. Yeah, I mean, like, and you're gonna have problems with your rotation when there's a power down tick, right? So, like, we're really not even gonna get to play with a lot of the Ixalan cards until, like, uh, what's it called? Happens. Uh, rotation next year happens. Uh, no, we ended up 3-2. I think. I don't actually remember. Check the archive on my YouTube channel. Good plug for the YouTube channel. If you haven't been here, we've been streaming for eh, almost five hours, actually. And, uh, oh, you know, could cast any more spells this turn, opponent. <laughs> Curious why Rule of Law before Nevermore, because I think they might be incentivized to counter this. And if that's true, I would, um, I would rather they counter this than counter my Nevermore. Because, like, they get a Pact of Negation plus Angel's Grace to basically, like, Force of Will something. I didn't activate Nykthos because I can't, I can't play any more spells. This card's symmetrical. I know people are used to busted effects like this not being symmetrical, but this is symmetrical. <clears throat> am, am I supposed to just name Simeon Spirit Guide with this? Real, real talk. Or do I just, like, hold on to this for what I draw? I think I'm just supposed to hold on to it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'm just gonna hold on to it for when we hit a, uh... Oh, actually, we should play it... 
We should play it out because if we hit end treat, I want to be able to nick those for more. Like, in order for Lightning Storm to be a threat, they need to get through this, this, and this. So, like, naming Spirit Guide here seems fine. I'm going to hold the second one, but I think putting this one into play so I can um, entreat the Angels for a little bit more seems fine. Gosh, look at, look at how smart and thin I am right now. I hope everyone appreciates how both smart and how thin I am. All right, they have the force of will here. They're going to do that, and then they're going to use uh, Angel's Grace next turn to not lose the game, I assume. <laughs> we have uh, f five more win conditions in our deck. I guess we have the Mist Veil planes, too. Should we should we be in danger of running out of win conditions? We can miss fail planes. God, I'm such a skilled magician. It was a miracle opponent. Why would you stop one of God's miracles? It's so rude. Enters the battlefield, choose a name. Oh, this card's literally... Yeah, I'm gonna name Ad Nauseam again with this. And then we'll name Patriarch Scorn on this Rune Halo. Oh, Halo doesn't stop scoring. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, whatever. You know, you are correct. Y'all are correct. A clock. Watch them cast the beat spirit guide. They went bottom, bottom. They must have a card. Yep. And they can't cast spells on my turn. <laughs> it's a miracle. All right. So they're dead in two of our turns. You can, correct, you can, you can un-exile Simeon Spirit Guide, you can undo Lotus Petals. <gasps> that was so rude, opponent. That was so rude. I'm glad I have this extra Grade Demolisher here. Uh, you entry for Miracle during the draw step. So you can't play the other Dictos out during the draw step. 
They must have this Patriarch Squad in their hand that I punted by not naming that on here. And unfortunately, I can't play this other Nevermore that I'm getting this turn. Because, again, um, rule of law is symmetrical. If they don't hit it this turn, I'm going to get to Nevermore them. Oh no, they found it. They did find it too. Oh, nope. Yep. All right, sweet. This should lock the game up then. Oh, I should have, I should have put these. I hadn't put, yeah, I should have misfilled before shuffling. Yeah, I hadn't thought about it. I was like, this doesn't matter because like I'm not shuffling, but like I literally just shuffled with the uh, idyllic tutor. Yeah, 10, 10 out of 10. Another reason for the legendary lad to shuffle. So I'm not really willing to trade off this next Grand Abolisher. Well, Grand Abolisher says they can't play cards on my turn. So, no, they actually can't. So, I would Vroon Halo and named Abandoned Hope just for the funsies, but um, I actually want to save this in case we draw the enchantment that lets us create angels when we play an enchantment. God, I can't even imagine how bad it must feel to be, like, behind in this game right now. Like, my opponent's playing, like, a stock, a real tier 2 deck, and we've just got, like... <laughs> Got Rule of Law and Gideon's Law and never Nevermourn out of the game. <laughs> hey, look. Need to shuffle those. Shuffle those and treat the angels back into our deck. Oh, I should have misfailed my Dillic Tutor back in, right? Probably. For my Grand Abolisher. There's your one spell for the turn. <laughs> Man, why do we even have these Entreat the Angels in our deck? We just like have these Grand Abolishers. I like how they keep like trying to cast the Mean Spirit Guides and then being like, oh right, rule of law, right? Can't do that. Now this, this is magic. This is something. I don't, I don't know what this is, but it's certainly something. I'm just going to do this during my opponent's turn to prove a point that I'm allowed to do things during their turn. It's probably a pretty good number of them, right? I'm not attacking with this because I don't want to get, I don't want them playing cards on my turn. And we have this Rude Halo conveniently had Simeon Spirit Guide. So. <laughs> I want to watch this versus Lantern. You're a, you're an interesting individual. You want to watch this versus Lantern Control.
They could they could still beat me to death with laboratory. But thankfully, I've got my backup rude Taylor here. <gasps> they lightning stormed our grand demolisher. Oh no! That's so rude, opponent! My poor Grand Demolisher! You like how our cards like jump back and forth here? Hey look, I remembered to put my things back in before I shuffled up the flagstones. Are you proud of me? Oh, I should have seen if they had two lands in hand. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I, f I forgot. I didn't pitch a land because I'm dumb. Because I wasn't thinking about the, what this card actually has the text on it. Like, the card's only ever played in one context, so... Now we're going to get Pact of Negated. Well, the face did matter because then, like... Our angels would be lethal. But yeah, if I'd have discarded some cards, we wouldn't have gotten Pact of Negated here. No, it wouldn't have been lethal because they have Phyrexian on life. Can I call the Miracle against her to wait as long, right? We might lose this game because of my, my mistake there. They hit the laboratory maniac. If they have another spoils, we actually lose the game. I think, I think we're actually a strong favorite to lose this game now. Yep, that is correct. <laughs> Maybe, I think naming the Scorn's a very reasonable play. <laughs> oh, they could have, they could have gone over. Yeah, they got rid of, they actually got rid of a spoils here. So they might not have any spoils left in their deck, which means we have we have a, a number of turns here. <laughs> yeah, maybe we didn't need the second one on ad nauseum. Alrighty. This is that new miracles deck everyone's talking about, right? They've had one, two, three pact negations. Please tell me the other one's over here. The fourth one is over there. Okay. So the next the next threat we draw is uh is gonna happen. We have two on ad nauseum, and then we have one here on Patriarchs or Patrician Scorn, which destroys all enchantments, which this deck sometimes plays. Another Sabine Spirit Guide, which this is naming Sabine Spirit Guide. <laughs> if we get into danger of this killing us, we'll play Rune Halo. Uh, I don't believe there's a Wrath in our deck. We have Oblivion Rings in our deck, though. Oh, we do actually have a Wrath of God in our deck, don't we? That's funny. <laughs> We 
And we have Wrath of Gods and Oblivion Rings. And, like, actual win conditions. <laughs> Am I supposed to play this out on Simeon Spirit Guide? Oh, yeah, it is better to hold the useless enchantments. <laughs> Alright, there's Grand Abolisher, which can trade with this. <laughs> Snap trading with the Laboratory Maniac. <laughs> Look at the... You like how it hides in my cards? Oh, magic online. And my opponent's just like trying to draw out their deck before before we can, right? This game was certainly something. Just I love I love the dedication, just like continuing to attack with two of the Sabine Spirit Guides. Where are my oblivion rings? Yeah, let's cast one of these on Sabine Spirit Guide just in case. In case they draw an Echoing Truth. I guess th if they draw an Echoing Truth, they get rid of it regardless, right? So, lab. We, ne we need to draw a way to get rid of this or a way to kill them before they draw six more cards out of their deck. <laughs> How many Oblivion Rings are in our deck? Two. And the Wrath of God. Uh, this might be too slow. Them having dealt two damage to themselves could be relevant here. This is actually going to be fast enough, right? They have four cards in their deck. This is a really weird draft format. Play one of those named Abandoned Hope, right? Oh, this was a mistake. I should have attacked first, right, in case they have an Echoing Truth. Oh, did they change it so you can only name cards that are legal in the format? They did, finally. Can't name Abandon Hope because it's not legal in modern. <laughs> Cast an Angel's Grace, sure. Totally lost. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not gonna reveal that. I want to name totally lost on this next one. <laughs> Good chat coming in with the clutch suggestions. Why did we block? Because they were dead. I wasn't thinking about it. It's fine. Look at that. We're on the scoreboard. 1-0. 1-0. Un undefeated. Deck's perfect. Magic's perfect. You know. Oh, wait. I need to... 
let's let's almost three gigs of ram yeah all right let's cut to the sponsor stream thank you everyone i hope everyone's having a great weekend great start to your week my name's jeff hogler hanging out playing some magic here this evening if you're enjoying what you see please consider subscribing on twitch becoming a patron on patreon i do appreciate that support you also support my content by supporting my sponsors mtgotraders.com will love to buy and sell magic online cards to you. Use code Hoagland PayPal at checkout there. Uh, you'll save 8% on your singles. Coolstuffinc.com buys and sells a lot of cool stuff, including TCG singles. Using promo code Jeff5, you could save 5% on magic, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh cards with them. Inkedgaming.com can help you customize your gaming experience. They do uh, custom playmats, mouse pads, and sleeves. And finally, SpareDeck.com, they will rent you any physical, standard, or modern deck. Let's say you want to play something wacky like this, but you don't want to buy all the cards for it yourself. You can rent it from Spare Deck for a weekend or up to an entire month. This deck is confirmed 100% against Adozium. Um, Sure. I don't know if this hand is good. We don't know what our, our range of keepable hands looks like. Basic planes, your move opponent. <laughs> Some water after almost choking on that game, right? Snowlands and scrying sheets, maybe. <laughs> All right, looks like Death Shadow. Never mind. Uh, looks like Living End, which uh, this Ghostly Prison, this Wrath of God, might be okay against. Mismatched white bordered planes, you mean? I do not have mismatched white bordered planes, but this does, this definitely feels like, this definitely feels like, uh, the type of deck that wants mismatched white bordered lands, I agree. It's like, go, go full troll. I hope they're one of those builds that has a Blood Moon in the main deck. Just for the lulls. Suppression Field makes this cost two more, right? These are these are activated abilities. Sure. This gives them a target for their their one thing, but like, I have a Wrath of God, so and I have a Ghostly Prison, so like I'm not super worried about it. Oh no! They killed my Ghostly Prison. This certainly means that. Uh, our board, our things are going away this turn. Angel beats by that. Ooh, ooh, a ghostly prison. You don't say. Dr. Dre says nothing, you idiots. Dr. Dre's dead. He's locked him up. Oh, do, wait, what? Do you not have it? Or you just don't want to get Wrath of Godded? Spooky prison. <laughs> it's 
so lucky my opponent cascaded in the living end. What did I walk into? Why? Why was this ghostly person good here? Can anyone? Can anyone explain? All right, now we just need the Phyrexian on life so we can Solemnity plus on life. Oh no, they're just casting their cards. That's a 4-4, it's terrifying. Hey look, a Phyrexian on life. All right, the race to another beast within. And another Phyrexian on life. What is that? Lurching Roar Beast. Well, if they don't have it this turn, we're going to get to Idyllic Tutor. They need they need the beast this turn, otherwise we're gonna get to Idyllic Tutor for another Ud life here. They could have Beast within here. We do have Nevermore. We do have uh the Gideon's intervention in the main. They have it. Wait, what? They tap for it, hoping you can see it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we have Gideon's intervention, but I can't play that this turn. So I'm just going to go to another unlife. And just, like, make them have double beast. What a what an interesting game of magic my opponent and I are playing. Are we having fun yet? Why not greater or Mancy? Uh, I actually don't stream on Mondays, Maddie. You pretty much just they might have two beasts within in their in their seventy and their sixty left. Peace, Leclerc. Go get my Miss Veil planes. Nah, man, Miss Veil Plains, we deck our opponent. 
Miss Felplate says we can't deck, so. It's like. <laughs> Fun, interesting, interactive magic, right? They just punch you. I would love to reveal this and treat the angels. Man, are we about to be up a game while being 1-0 with this deck? Oh no! Oh no! They found a beast within! Oh no! They must only have two beasts within, or they just didn't have it there. Alright, so we. Alright, so Rest in Peace is great, clearly. Greater Oromancy is great. Nevermore and Eidolon of Rhetoric is great. Magus of the Moat actually isn't very good because they just sweep the board. What cards are bad? All of our cards are amazing, so I don't know what to cut. This probably isn't a Rune Halo matchup. Oblivion Ring's probably not very good either. Oh, Leyline of Sanctity doesn't do much, right? O Ring can stay. Magus stops hard casts. I guess that's fair. Probably better than O-Ring. Getting a Magus in your bed is great. Okay, that's funny. <laughs> I think this is how I want to board. I think this is how I want to board. Defense grid only makes cascading cost six if they do it on our turn. Has the combo and uh, who would keep this hand on the draw? And if anyone in chat is in, if chat is in, I'm in. The sand is all the cards we want in life, right? Any anyone? Any anyone in? Anyone in for this? It's just everything you want to be doing in life, right? Only only need to draw only need to draw lands. How many lands are there? That's a good question. We gotta bring math into this. I don't want to bring math into this. Let's just keep it. We aren't playing this deck to not keep hands like this. Supportive of making bad decisions. This head like already has an intro in it. Yeah, we probably should have spilled again. <laughs> How to check the hypergym? Oh no! I'm so unlucky. This is by fault. I mean, it's always by fault, Immortals. Blame Twitch chat. They made me, the Twitch chat made me do it. The Twitch chat made me do it. What are your thoughts on Clock Magic? I feel like both Hex and Magic 
Should managing time be necessary? They're definitely too long in Hex. It's probably debatable on if they're too long in Magic. Because, like, Magic, the Magic client is clunky and, like, tapping lands is really awkward. But I think Hex, like, doesn't have that problem and, like, gives you more time than Magic. So, like, the Hex clocks are definitely too long. All right. Mulligan more, people. Mulligan more. I'll do what I say, not what I do. Do as I say, not as I do. Defense card only works if they cast the spell on our turn. I mean, our deck has literally won 100% of its matches so far, so I'm pretty sure, pretty sure it's unbeatable. Uh, this hand just really doesn't do anything, right? It like makes land drops, like ghostly prisons, like okay. I think I'd want to mulligan a hand where I have rest a piece of my deck. Yeah, it's six. I'm gonna keep this. That seems fine. They're missing their second lead. What a... What a quality game of magic. Pitching Simeon Spirit Guides to cycle things to try and find your second lead. <laughs> Conveniently an enchantment creature here. So it is Shroud, thanks to our greater Oromancy. Did I just name Beast Within? I just named Beast Within, right? There aren't any spirits in R75. That's an interesting question. Why is Eidolon in this deck? Because um, you don't want to Rule of Law because a lot of the decks that you want the Rule of Law type effect against uh, play Echoing Truth. So, they could theoretically hard cast their stuff and beat us down here too, but. Holy crap, we're getting lost, Legacy. Leyline would have done something. Border on our Leylines, what a big what a big giant fool I am. Cause they can't beat our combo, that's why. C -c combo We're a combo deck, you board and lost legacy against combo decks. Just 
Get rid of your discard pile there. Not that I don't not that I don't think that does anything. Full mayor mage resolves. Simeon spirit guide, yep. Also, this is a 1 4. So I can block some of their guys. They you need to find a win condition before they hard cast all their dudes and dudettes. I'm holding this unlife so that way if we draw the thing that makes angels on cast enchantment, we can trigger it right away. Uh, they took our the other half of this combo away. All right, here come the booms. The fattiest of the booms. They suspended living end. Oh, I guess that gets rid of my Eidolon. Sure. We, we do have a lot of turns. When are we supposed to play this unlife so that way they can't lost legacy out of my hand? Of course, if they lost legacy out of my hand, I kind of don't mind drawing a new card, right? It gets me closer to a win condition. It's a miracle! Watch us get like Maelstrom Pulse or something. That's fair, said Mendes. This is this is a prime example of people having too much time on their clocks. Like, but it's just like clearly doing something else while they're also playing with us. Oh wait, okay, this has two counters on it. Woo! I forgot to check this. They have a living end suspended here. This, this could have almost been really bad. Could have almost been really bad for us. But this has two counters on it, so I am not a complete and total idiot. I am an idiot because I didn't check it, but I'm not a complete and total idiot because we're not, we're not getting savaged. <laughs> My opponent's asking me in chat why they can't cast Beast Within. You can't. Gideon, Gideon has intervened. You cannot cast Beast Within. Are to it. Oh, Matt, are you still here? I found our deck for Saturday. This is it. We're undefeated. Just bottoms, bottoms up, Mr. Matthew. Three mana fog uh, would let uh, Living End play the fog. So you can only play cards that cost three or more in Living End.
How could I be seated while playing this deck? Ooh, the 2 0 1 0 pairing. They're gonna gonna get him. Get him good. Uh, I guess we keep this. You describe this as a toolbox mid-range deck with a combo finish. Yeah, I mean, by by definition, that's kind of what it is, right? Probably gonna be much too slow on the draw against burn. Rats! We ran into one of those modern decks that has a tear in front of it. Ooh, shrine to decks. Would like a rune halo, please. Do we have an amazing matchup against Burn? I guess we have Bane deck ley lines. And this is again like this is just what I like to call like the the interactive deck problem in modern, right? Um, we are likely going to lose um, lose this game because we just didn't know what our opponent was playing game one. So like we couldn't, our deck's kind, kind of trying to be interactive. So like we couldn't just like mulligan a hand that would be bad here. Mm -hmm. will slow him down a second. get to wrath them next turn ad nauseum and uh the other one are like are like medium midas Solidly tier two. They're not. They're not bad decks by any means, but like they're solidly tier two. Let's go and wipe those out. Still. If we hit a, if we hit a leyline of sanctity here, suppression field, not so good. Gets, uh, you get bolted. It's a rift bolt. Probably dead. <laughs> oh, right. They just get to pay for. All right, we get to mulligan accordingly in these next games. A little bit too late, Leyline. All right, what am I... How am I boarding? Greater Oromancy is probably not terrible. Uh, rule of Law is not very good. Suppression... Oh, that's fair. You get suppression fields like Nevermore is kind of like a counter spell, right? Can name uh, destructive revelry with it. Rhetoric blocks that might be okay. This hand does not seem good enough when we have ley lines to mulligan two, just like this. Hopefully we do this, into this, into this, into Frixane on life. Bring him the beat down. Do not need a Gideon's intervention. I would love to put that into play.
I don't know. It's a good question. Now that's a sorcery, right? That's not listed on here. All right, give me a land. We hit a land, we're probably a lock to win this game. pretty good land please <sighs> that guy does not stop damage prevention which is nice I have an idol on here we're gonna be in trouble That's a tilt. And draw their board cards. Now, oh, please. <sighs> oh, magic happens sometimes. We bottomed it on land, so. Oh, magic. Not anytime soon, eh? All right, on to the fourth batch. Quick and brutal there. And again, just like, that's the risk you take when you play in a deck that's like trying to be interactive or like cares about its cards lining up against its opponent's cards in a particular particular manner. We lost the first game because our opponent was playing burn and our hand wasn't good against burn. And then we lost the second game because we, you know, magic happened and we bricked and died on lands. So by not playing a proactive deck, you're giving up a portion of games that you wouldn't give up if you were playing a proactive deck. Then seems fine. And like, if we'd have had this hand against the burn deck game one, we'd have likely slaughtered them, right? Please be a deck that loses the ley line. Please be a deck that loses the ley line. Please be a deck that loses. Is it ad nauseum again? Is this the same person? Nope, different person. All right, just ad nauseum again. All right. Nope, dredge. All right. Let's do it. Rune Halo is going to name Prized Amalgam here in a second. I play modern when people give me money to play modern. We 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 played a league with Kiki Cord tonight too. All right, and by that I mean we're naming Blood Gas because they have two of those. Remember that time they played their land after using their neonate? Good, good sequencing. A, A plus sequencing from the opponent here. It's such a quality of life improvement, being able to see what I'm typing with that card. It's more than good. It's great. <laughs> hmm. 
Just like casting a thug here. Life from the loam? Sure. They, they made some actual improvements to it, prototype, because, like, it uh, it only displays cards that are legal in the format that you're playing now, too, which it didn't do that previously. Which is good, like, it technically follows the rules of magic now. Whereas before... Just, like, going to get my combo pieces here, right? Probably starting with Phyrexian on life. Phyrexian on life, like, we have more Phyrexian on life in our deck, but this one has an impact on the board without us having anything else, which is nice. So. Leyline is actually a non, has a non-zero impact in this matchup because it protects us from Conflagrate. Uh, I think I'm going to play this before I play this, because I can activate Nykthos for four mana, and this will be five, and I can play Sigil next turn. Then the following turn, I could go, like, O-Ring plus Unlife, make two four fours. Opponent just, like, trying to do an honest Reg Day's work, just, like, failing miserably. Cheaty Face was one of our favorite casual cards as a kid. My playgroup card was great. Oh, Ghostly Prison, another card that uh, Dredge can't beat. Yeah, Ordinary Kid, that is correct. Uh, there aren't really that many, like, haste-based aggro decks in Modern, so I don't think that card's particularly good. And a lot of the creature-based decks are, aren't are really, um... This deck's gas. Trying, trying to metagame Modern is like a fool's errand, though. Like, a lot of... Like, you're, you could never predict what you're going to play against, so, like, playing a deck that's, like, metagame good is just, like, asking for a miserable time at a large tournament. No, Cheaty Face is the flying creature that says if you can sneak this into play without anyone noticing, it uh, it doesn't cost you any mana, you get to leave it in play. They could flagrate at their blood gas so they could bring their blood gas back and bring back prize to Belgo. What are the odds they concede to Ghostly Prison plus uh, Oblivion Ring next turn? Probably pretty good. Make, make two 4-4s. Four a metagame storm list is pretty good, right? That reminds me, Storm, Storm won the, Storm won the open, right? Was that, was that true? If so, I have a, I have a tweet to go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna go. Where it is? Oh, my tweet's back and forth with this person. Someone, someone posted... About Storm never being able to beat a single piece of interaction. I'm just like, have you played against the same Storm deck? <laughs> it's making glass cars cheaper. Think Storm will get a banning, and if so, complete for ballot trees also for the driver of the format. I mean, like Storm, Storm is one of the decks that makes the format miserable. It is, it is one of the. It does check the boxes of things that are miserable and modern. 
It all depends. It all depends on if you think what Storm is doing is a bug or a feature of the format. It, you could you could make a strong argument that the way Storm plays out is a feature of Modern, and it's something they want players to have access to, and that's fine. There are definitely people that enjoy playing Storm, and if you are one of them, then it's a great that that deck is in the format for you. Yeah, there's there's a lot of decks, but like. They would have to curate the list of decks in Modern pretty heavily in order to push it, um, push the format towards being more interactive. How are we boarding in this matchup? The We have Rested Pieces, which are obviously great. Um, it's more like, what are the cuts? Magus of the Moat is decent in this matchup. Yep. Yeah, and the storm, and it's very, it's very resilient. It's able to fight through hate, but like, get the the gifts and given angle that the storm deck gets to attack from is so incredibly powerful because it really allows the deck to like power through that spot removal and one for one discard by like actually generating card advantage and having a plan as the game goes along. Oh no, they could flag raided my angels. I mean, wizards hate storm because the type and they tried to attack but then couldn't get god opponent. Can I interest you in this wrath of god? Wizards doesn't like storm because the type of magic that storm plays in general isn't isn't enjoyable or interactive to both parties. But, like, again, I think, like, picking Storm out as, like, this bad guy in Modern is, like, kind of disingenuous because, like, a lot of the decks that are good in Modern are, like, doing things, doing things that, like, Storm's doing that are, like, kind of obnoxious. I really, I really think it would be interesting if, like, Watsi just, like, ripped the Band-Aid off and just, like, banned Grape Shot in Modern. Like, stop, stop pussyfooting around and, like banning all of these these like random enablers for storm and just like just leave them only empty the warrens so that way they have to like goblin bushwhacker or something to kill the turn they go off give people a chance to engineered explosives them and pontiff them and static caster them and wrath of god them i think that's that's what actually needs to happen they need to like and again that's that's a purely subjective metric and if you're someone that thinks the unfair decks are more fun to play more power to you. It's like that's that's your right. You are you are allowed to enjoy things that I don't enjoy. That is your right as an individual. That being said, I am also allowed to say, hey, I think this is miserable to play with and against. Opponent's gonna conflagrate down our angel here, most likely. I don't even think you need to be an empty. I think empty is like an exceptionally like fair and reasonable thing for storm to, way for storm to be killing. I think everyone's opinions are wrong, especially my own. Rats can't attack through the stinkweed imp. Opponent catch so like I'm like using Twitter and reading chat and talking to you all about this deck, and opponent is literally used nine minutes this. I 
They will block your price to Belgrome. Anthony, the deck's probably fine. This is a, oh yeah, they have to pay mana for every attacker, so they're not gonna attack with these ones. Yeah, there's a lot of things in the ban list that like like there, there's people when I when I say there's a lot of things in the ban list that could probably stand to come off it. There's like the obnoxious people out there like yeah, unban everything. Nothing needs to be on the ban list. It's like no skull clamp and chrome Mox and right in flame like. Those hypergenesis, those cards, those cards are probably fine to keep on the ban list. Cards that don't need to be on the ban list are like Jace the Mind Sculptor and Stoneforge Mystic and Bloodbraid Elf, just like these incredibly fair interactive cards. <laughs> a glimpse of nature, yeah. Like there's there are a few really obnoxious cards that like are great. A great to have on there, but like, if I, I love when people look me straight in the face and honestly believe that the format where I can play Karn 40% 40, 40 of the time on turn three in a deck, should I choose to play it, is, is Jace the Mind Sculptor is too powerful. They will, they will tell you straight up that that is what they think. What are we paying mana for? Or flashing back faithful looting, sure. Hey, Crater204 with the brand new Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Welcome to the stream. As always, like I said, new subs. You think Jason's fair? I'm not truly. I would describe a game with untapped as J neither fair or interactive. Modern is a format that is full of decks that are unfair and non interactive and are cards that at least Jace. So. Jace makes you feel helpless, but actually gives you a chance to, like, have some play around it still. The other decks are just actually outright fucking killing you. Like, why Why is this card that allows me to mostly take over the game for 4 mana too strong, but cards that decks like Storm that are actually straight out ending the game, not mostly taking over the game, but the game is over, it's done, we're done playing, you've killed me. Those cards are fine? Like, that. that's ridiculous. I get it. Jace is scary and it feels bad and and whatever. But like I I don't understand how you can look me in the face and tell me that Storm is fine or like these other things. Yeah, more dread boards. Exactly. Hero's Downfall, probably a modern playable magic card. Remember when Nahiri was everywhere and people started playing uh dread boards? Like Another 4-4, four, four. God bless. You know, it's funny. I Actually, I wrote, I have an article about this on Gathering Magic. Do you know what cards, these cards people thought were too strong for modern that were on the ban list at one point? Um, Valakut, Bitter Blossom, Ancestral Visions, uh, Th Sword of the Meek. Like all of these cards, people were like adamant that these cards were too good for modern just like jace and blood raid elf and stoneforge mystic are too good for modern like they're they were they were adamant that these things were too good it's like well none of those cards really had an impact like valakut is the only wild mcconnell valakut is the only one of those cards that i just named that people were like certain shouldn't be unbanned that's even in a tier one deck at this point
No, Stoneforge Mystic is not minor league. We'd we'd be playing a buck ton of Stoneforge Mystic. We'd be brewing Dead Guy Ale until it was solidly tier four on this channel in modern. If I could play Stoneforge Mystic in modern, I just want to play crappy black and white creatures together. Is that is that really asking so much? It's all I want out of life. I wonder if they're gonna stop trying to attack with. Even if they win this game, like yes, yeah, they, they realize they have to pay mana, so they're not gonna attack with these. <laughs> they've they've used 14 minutes off their clock. Their clock, they're down 14 minutes right now. Pod Splinter Twin. Yeah, like I would I would make I would make Pod and Splinter Twin legal too. Along with all the other four mana cards I just listed, I would make Pod and Splinter Twin legal too. Yes, yes, and, and, and honestly, in a format like Modern where, like, Lightning Bolt can be a popular card, um, you have to, like, play your Jason plus it a lot of the time, too, and you have to have, like, stabilized the board, like, you tap out on four against an aggro, like, burn even, and, like, you're just gonna attack your Jason to death, right, or just attack and kill you. I, I, too, okay, as a control player, I would much rather play against Birthing Pod than Collected Company. Probe's miserable. I hate I hate attacking Probe as a magic card, and I think that card can stay banned forever and always. <laughs> hey, hey, a 4-4. Four, four. I, I would get rid of Probe in Legacy 2, just because, like, I feel like Probe doesn't add any value to the format. It just, like... What's the word I'm searching for? It just, like, removes an interesting aspect of the game. Opponents down to six cards in their hand. One has three cards left in their deck. Can I just like, like after the Kiki Jiki deck we just played, do, does the chat understand that I just want to pod Voice of Resurgence into Renegade Rallyer and get back my Voice of Resurgence? Am I really, am I really such a bad person for wanting to do that? It's all, it's all I want out of life, chat. I just want to pod. Voice of Resurgence into Renegade Rallyer. Do you think I could be allowed to do that at some point? I think I'm going to block with this. Oh no! My angel! It's hidden! It's hidden among the enchantments! To, like draw spells tilt <laughs> alright well the good news is it's looking like we're going to be able to time our opponent out in the second game even if we lose this one I really wish we were talking about cards. I didn't mention these cards in modern yet. I really wish dig and treasure crews were legal in modern because I would love it if my opponent was delving six and seven cards out of their discard pile to draw cards instead of trying to kill me. Like when they play a one mana five, five or a one mana four, five, it's like, man, that sucks. I would much rather you were just like dirtling trying to draw cards, right? I think, uh, based on the current modern format, uh, Blazing Shoal's probably fine. Uh, we are currently 2-1 and one in this league. We lost to Burn, and we beat Living End, and we beat, uh, Ad Nauseam. 
Can I draw an enchantment, please? Preferably uh, the one that says I can't lose the game anymore. Alright, that one makes a 4-4 at least. Opponent's got two cards left in their deck. Well, opponent just conceded this game, which uh, means they're probably going to lose because they have to win two games in seven and a half minutes. Suppression field's pretty bad. What else is bad in this matchup? Some ley lines are probably fine. Is Nevermore not good enough? Maybe these cards aren't good enough. I guess Gideon Intervention is another, another Rune Halo type effect. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be in Baltimore. Rule of Law is terrible. Yep. Yep, yep. Good call. You only never work for Conflagrate if you don't hit Leyline. That's fair. Yeah, I'm going to leave the Leylines in for Conflagrate. I probably want the extra greater Oromancy post board. Let's give this a try. Easy, easy mulligan. This hand, you could argue, is not a miracle. I'm going to keep this on the draw with a scry. I think double, double prison on the draw with a scry is fine. There's probably an argument that I have three rips in my deck, so, like, maybe I should mulligan a little bit more aggressively than this, but... Ghostly Prison's pretty good in this matchup. It might be a little bit slow turn three on the draw, though. I would not shed any tears if Deathrite Shaman and Gitaxian Pro both ate it in Legacy. I don't know that they, they deserve to eat it on a power level context, but on a they would make the format more interesting, it would definitely be. Yeah, I, I agree, Cryptic Reband. I think... Uh, People are just people are just like afraid and conditioned. Like again, like people see these things that were too good in standard, and then they're like, oh, they were too good in standard, they have to be too good in modern, like completely forgetting the context of the statement, which is that like modern's a much different format than standard was. If we get basic planes next turn, we'll play this rune tailo out. The third of green, you're only bidding one dredger. Okay. Let's see how lucky they are. Okay, they hit a they did not hit a third dredger, that's good for us. Is that one good? How do we how do we feel about that one, chat? What do we what do we think? I think that one might be okay. Halo often names their threats. So will name like Bloodgast or Priced Amalgam or whatever threat they have in play. Yeah, they put they did put two abrupt decays in the bin. Well, I mean, like, modern's also the type of format where like um people don't really innovate because like they're they're generally not rewarded to, so like they kind of stay safe. So like people weren't pushed into working on Death Shadow until like the other better things were banned out of the format. <sighs> they killed my rest in peace. That's so rude. The old pay to discard Malone. Yep. Ha <laughs> 
I like how they keep trying to attack while the ghost sleeper sits out. That's my favorite. Have a have another one, friend. Friendo. Come back, friendo. You didn't want to attack with these creatures, did you? Cause that's that's not an option. Nope, nope, stop it. Stop it. Get back nope, get back in the cage. Nope, stop it. <laughs> I almost feel bad. <laughs> almost feel bad. Not don't actually, but we're we're close. Almost. Just a little bit doo doo. Just a little bit doo doo. Beep to dee doo doo. Beep doo. Beep to dee. Stop! Stop hitting him! He's already dead! Stop hitting him! <laughs> what a game of Magic the Gathering. We are three and one. Three and one. Last, last match of Magic the Gathering for the evening. Yeah, the, the Delta threats were a big pickup. They just can't see the ghostly prison. It's it's spooky. While we're waiting for this last match to pop up, just like to say good morning, afternoon, and good night to everyone, wherever you're out in the world. Thanks for choosing to spend part of your day here with us. My name is Jeff Hoagland. I'm a TCG player and content producer, and I hope you're enjoying yourself. I know I'm enjoying myself. If you're enjoying what you see, please hit that follow button. It uh, helps other people find my stuff. Um, if you really want to support my content, though, you can subscribe on Twitch, become a patron on Patreon. Those both uh, those both support myself financially directly, so I can spend more time producing content like this and less time doing other things. You can also support my content by supporting my sponsors. MTGOTraders.com would love to buy and sell magic online cards with you. If you use code Hoagland PayPal at checkout with them, you'll save 8% on all of your singles orders there. CoolStuffInc.com buys and sells a lot of cool stuff, including TCG singles. Using promo code uh, Jeff5, you can save 5% on magic, Pokemon, and you. Yu-Gi-Oh cards with them. Gaming.com would love to help you customize your gaming experience. Using code Jeff12, you can save 12% on custom playmats, mouse pads, and sleeves. You can upload your own custom artwork, or you can choose from their wide selection of artwork on the website. And finally, SpareDeck.com, they offer kind of a unique service. Let's say you wanted to rent some sweet mono white prison cards like this. They will rent you any physical, standard, or modern deck for a weekend or an entire month. And using promo, promo code Hoagland7, you can save 7% on your rentals from them. We still Karn for president kind of guy. You've given up. I mostly just stopped playing modern competitively. I found um, playing modern uh, with the goal of winning is kind of a frustrating experience. So, like when we're playing modern on this channel, we're mostly just like doing it to like play something weird like this or have just have fun as opposed to trying to be competitive. I think if I was like forced to play modern competitively, I would probably play green black Tron. And I think that's still one of the one of the better decks in the format uh, by a significant margin. But uh, again, just not not really aiming aiming to be super competitive in in modern in general. The format's got a lot of matchup variants in it, which is pretty frustrating. What's going on, Ian. I just like playing this out to make mana, basically. I think I am. Uh, worm Coil. Uh, yeah, I think I'm just doing Worm Coil again. Or Ulamog. Nope, Ulamog doesn't matter. Because they will just exile our deck. What did we lose to? Uh, we lost to Burn. Tron's a I, I assume Tron's a, an abysmal matchup. Right, Halo doesn't do much. Nevermore is fine. Stony Silence is fine. None of these other cards are for Rule of Law doesn't. I guess Rule of Law and Eidolon, like, technically, like, slow them down. Leyline of Sanctity probably doesn't do much. They might have some discard spells. Good, I am. 
I am ready ready for a quick last match of the night, and then we're going to play some Turbo PA and Hex to wrap up the evening, which is another really sweet combo deck in Hex's current standard format. Now, see, okay, so this is actually a really good, a really good, like, modern, modern lesson here. Someone said here, Fox Okad says, this is why I splash blue for spreading seeds. Splashing blue for spreading seeds in a deck like this to try and win a matchup like Tron that you're probably still going to lose anyways is exactly how you don't want to approach a format like modern. Um, in modern, there's so many different decks that you're just never going to be able to beat that you essentially just want to give up those matchups. Just say, hey, I know I know this matchup's really bad. I know I'm not going to be able to win against your, your deck ever. So we just, just not not going to not going to try but i'm just going to hope to dodge the matchup you could like be frustrated and like spend all these board slots like making other matchups that are really good worse by like trying to edge out this matchup that you're still going to be like 30 or 40 percent in if you're lucky or you could just hope to dodge it and just like not waste a bunch of board slots trying to make that matchup better sure yep We got a suppression field here. Man. <laughs> We're just about to get natural trod, aren't we? <laughs> Woo! Woo! I was scared there for a second. I got as as afraid. I was afraid we were going to get it. We were going to get got. Ooh. Yeah, I'm just going to Solemnity here. I could Ghost Quarter them, but, like, I kind of need my lands. I named Karn. They need Tron plus another land to cast Ulamog. Or Ugin. We got one, two, three, four, five mana, so I can cast this for X as one. I'm probably gonna cast this for X as one and just beat them down here. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm not gonna ghost quarter them yet because it could unlock green cards that they have in their hand. Ha! You cannot deal damage to us. No, it explicitly says counters can't be put on artifacts, creatures, enchantments, or lands, so it actually just doesn't impact planeswalkers at all. Green Red Tron, interesting. There's this tower, yep. Yes, actually. Um, sweet. This is actually going to be lethal next turn then, right? I get to ghost quarter them off this or is this mine? Now we have to try and win a game on the draw. Hopefully they mulligan to nothing. Give it a chance to Eve Digger by Ghost of Flatus. Oh no! 
Suppression field stops ghost quarter. Bested by my own card. All right. Ugin me. Tilt. Tilt! Do you not have an opponent? Do you not have the Ulamog of Doom? The Ugin, sorry. They do have enough mana for Ugin. They have, they have, they have the Urza's Tower from last turn. <sighs> that means they don't have enough mana to Ugin me, right? Because this is 7, 8, 9, and this makes them 2 to activate it. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, that's tasty. We got a game off the Tron Overlords. That feels good. Ah, uh, yep. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna change anything. Nope. Don't think we're gonna change anything. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm just gonna bring in these Grand Demolishers as Grizzly Bears. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yep, Stony Silence and Suppression Field, let's go. No, Torment of Hailfire is most definitely not a thing. The Solemnities, along with, uh, here comes the Sylvan Scrying. Yep. <sighs> the Solemnities, along with Phyrexian on life, allow you to never take damage. Well, they got Grove of the Burn Willows. That means they already have it. Play the suppression field so they can't carn us until next turn. Maybe they just don't have a planeswalker and we'll be fine. Uh, because this costs three mana and it was only my second turn. Yeah, I can't do that yet. They can do that. Yeah, I should have. Maybe I should have Stony Silence. Nah, I think that's better. Maybe. Maybe they'll just hit artifacts for the rest of the game. There's his ugly mug. All right, land please. Sting. Oh. Mmm. Land zones, flag zones would be insane if it brought into play untapped. So if I play Nevermore, they could just Oblivion Stone us. I guess I should have Stony Silence done too. They can't know that's going to be better than Suppression Field. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead. Go ahead and pack it in. <sighs> we don't have a turn. They just cast the car next turn. They just. No, it's not. They have seven mana. Ostone is five to activate plus two from Suppression Field. So they just like play a card. They Ostone me the next turn. Or if I play Stony Silence, they cast the Karn and then just wait a turn cycle to use the Karn. 
So, anyway, 